What's up guys? So for today's video, I'm going to be doing a clove guide for bind. Um, so my last video was actually about um, a clove guide on Icebox. It was kind of the same style of video and you guys kind of seem to enjoy it, right? Um, it got close to a thousand views in just only a span of two days. Um, you know, I got a lot of uh, feedback from that and you guys kind of seem to enjoy that, that kind of uh, content, like specifically with clove. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm doing the same thing for bind. Um, you know, if you recall my, uh, you know, Clove breakdown video, I actually did a tier list on the maps that I think Clove would be like most effective on. And the two maps being in the S tier slot ended up being Icebox and Bind. So I did Icebox first. Um, now I'm doing Bind. So um, yeah, I'm basically going to break down how to attack, defend, and kind of to like how to set yourself up and your teammates in order to get a lot of value out of Clove's kit. Now, I'm um, just going to say this real quick. If you are new here, um, basically, I just do educational content on Valorant, right? I can go anywhere from uh, agent guides to team guides because um, I do coach uh, Valorant <clears throat> um, in the tier three scene as well. So I do have a lot of experience uh, in the kind of strategic side of the game. So, yeah, I, I go for like, you know, anywhere um, in the kind of strategy domain of Valorant. So if you are he new here and you kind of enjoy that type of content, please drop a sub. Best way to support me and kind of, you know, if you want to see more of that content, it's the best way to make it happen. So, you know, drop that sub. And uh, yeah, other than that, I'll get right into it and hope you guys enjoy. All right, guys. So I'm going to be starting with attack, um, specifically a site for this part of the video. Um, now, one thing just to clarify before going into it, I just want to say that if you like the reason why Clove is S tier on this map, um, I mean, not the reason, but the circumstance in which Clove is going to be S tier is if you run them as a secondary controller. Um, now, I've been over this in my uh, tier list. So in the, the Clove breakdown um, video in the tier list part, but I just want to clarify it before going into it, because um, obviously like running clove as a as a you know single controller on this map is not bad like it's it's very doable even like people run solo brimstone on the uh, all the time and i would tend to think that uh clove kind of does the same thing but um you will get like a lot of value like the 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 extra amount of value that you're looking for in order to like make it an s tier um is kind of like in the combination with the viper now um for people who watch pro play and stuff like that, um, Viper is just like probably the best agent on the map, to be honest with you. Like there's just so much value you can get out of that agent. And um, yeah, that's basically like the, the kind of combo that we're going to be using today is Clove and Viper. Um, like I said, um, if you want to run Clove solo controller on this map, it's very doable as well. I'm just saying that, you know, to get like the most insane amount of value you could possibly um, get from Clove. Uh, you're going to need the Viper, to be honest with you. So the to start off, I'm going to start with attack. Like I said, I'm going to be talking about a site because um, it's kind of like the most complicated one, to be honest. Like B is very, very simple. I'm going to get it, you know, into it later. But, you know, there's nothing much to say about B, to be honest with you. But for A, um, one thing that's very important to kind of uh, take into consideration before starting is that your viper setup is going to look like this pretty much every single round of attack um, i mean if you watch pro play or if you've played um you know competitively you know that this viper setup is you know thrown pretty much every single fucking round um you know possibly like the best viper um attack setup in the game to be honest with you like it's so like good um, and it gets a lot of value if you are able to use it correctly um yeah so that's your viper thing right so as you can see these smokes are just not for sight at all it's a lurk wall in order to try to get u-haul space it has nothing to do with getting the bomb down a and it has nothing to do with getting the bomb down b so like that's why you need a secondary controller if you're running viper right because if you're running viper well chances are you want to run that setup and if you want to get on site well you're going to need smokes right so you're going to need like you know a smoke here um you're gonna need like a smoke either here or here depending on like if you take showers or not um very recommended by the way I always take showers if you're hitting a but um yeah no that's that's basically like the best way to put it like your viper is like literally just on perma lurk duty and viper is not necessarily used as a controller uh on attack on bind um she's more used as a uh, sentinel uh, very like 
lurkish type of play style. <clears throat> so, so yeah, that's just something I have to clarify first. So knowing that this is your Viper setup, um, you know, you can already tell that your smokes on A are going to look like, you know, something like this, right? Um, you're going to smoke like this. It isolates the, the site. It, you know, gives your, uh, like your teammate a chance to get bombed down, right? Because if you have control of this and this will realistically speaking, your enemies can only be like behind here. And if they are here, well, you can get bombed down here pretty well, right? So it's like, it's basically common sense at that point. Uh, I'm sure it's not rocket science for any of you. So your smokes are going to look like this. And in some instances, and again, this is going to be up to you. You can also smoke like this if you want to fight for backsight. Um, I think this is also like a pretty good smoke combination to have. But I'm going to be talking about like if you want to slam A, like how do you want to play it? Because usually, like I'm telling you right now, if you're playing Clove on Bind, your job will not be lurking like ever. You do not want to lurk on Clove. I think it's like one of the most not like one of the the best ways to waste her utility quite literally because you have a heal you have a good decay you have a respawn and all that stuff you want to be able to trade your teammates that's basically like what clove is for you want to initiate fights if you get like one like let's say you get to one hp by taking a fight but at least you trade your teammate you have a heal that automatically gets you back to 100 um you know it gives you 100 shield and you can take another fight in the next like i don't know like 10 to 15 seconds so it's like um, you don't want to be alone, right? Because it's it's like it puts you in a, a certain position where you're just taking a one on one, and I feel like that's not what Clove is for. It, Clove is really just um, like taking one on ones, yes, in a way, but it's also like very powerful when you're trying to trade teammates or get traded. Because if you're being shot and you are with a teammate and you kill that the the guy who's shooting at you and you take like I don't know three bullets to the chest, so you're one HP. Um, well, like you know, 40 HP, so you're one bullet. Well, you just heal, you're 140 HP, you're back to normal health, basically, and you can take another fight. So it's good for trades, right? Because you can constantly, well, you, you don't constantly do it. You can do it one time, but you can go for more than one trade is basically the best way to put it. So when you're playing Clove, you want to be with your teammates. So if your teammates are going A, you want to be going A as well, right? You don't, you don't want to see like some Cypher plays, right? Cypher players tend to do that because Cypher is made for that where your team's going in your cypher is just walking up b and trying to get a timing right that's not you're not going to use clove like that um at least that's not the best way to do it um is kind of my stance uh, i would say so if you're hard hitting a you are going a that's just simple as that you have way too much utility that can be used on site i don't know why the fuck you would decide to lurk instead so that's the first thing so when you want to slam a um there are a couple things you need to to keep in mind there are two major parts to taking A, obviously, uh, A short and showers. The most important thing to kind of note, it, it's kind of like your smokes are going to depend on whether or not you're taking showers. Um, now, let's say I made up like a pretty like standard comp that people use. Uh, let's say this is your comp. Well, chances are like your Viper is either going to be like, you know, going short with you guys or you can put her long or she can even be lurking B, honestly, like there, it doesn't necessarily matter. But for Club, I recommend going short most of the time because her uh, decay can be used pretty well from there. Uh, you can decay like back triple pretty easily. Um, you can decay in U-Haul pretty easily from A short as well, right? As you're running up with the setup, like you can do, you can do that. <clears throat> Even if there's no wall up, like obviously. Um, like when you're going showers, I mean, you're only going to get like the opportunity to use it once you get back here. And by the time you're here, chances are like people are already going to be in this area getting bombed down. So it's not it's it doesn't really help for the site exec. It really just helps for this, the post plant more than anything else. And um, I mean, it's it's not a bad way to use it. I'm not saying that I'm just saying like most of the time you're going to need your decay to hit site because hitting a site on bind can be a little bit aids. Um, so. So yeah, most of the time I would say like you're going to go short also because like you're going to be exposed to the, to the higher amount of fights, right? So there's probably going to be one person U-Haul. There could be one person Cubby here. There one, could be one person default. There could be one person back triple shooting at you, right? When you're going showers, you're really just ex like exposed to that one guy who's going to be here. And if he's not here, well, he's back here. And it's like, you know, there's nothing like, obviously there are fights to take in showers, but you have way more fights to take if you're going short. And considering that you have a heal and a respawn, I think going short is just better for Clove overall. So let's say you're going uh, you're going short. Um, I recommend, you know, usually Viper going showers just because it's a little bit more optimal. 
Um, I think if you have two initiators, you want Sky to go short because um, she can flash through the wall like this and raise because, you know, raises your duelist. You kind of want your duelist to go short as well. Um, good possibilities of double satcheling with the flash, um, double satcheling in U-Haul with a dog. There's a lot of things you can do. Um, so, yeah, I mean, let's say this is your kind of starting position in order to hit A. Um, obviously, you're going to take shower space, right? So this means that um, you don't necessarily have to worry about this space. So what you can do is smoke like this, right? Because a lot of people, what they'll do is they smoke like this, but all five players are going short. Well, the problem with that is um, if you have an enemy, like an opponent in showers, and he knows nobody's coming from this area, um, he can really just very easily crunch you and spray you or do whatever um, because he's not smoked off. And even, even if you wanted to smoke him off, he still has the possibility to spray through the smoke to kill your planner or dump utility in order to get like the delay the plant and stuff like that. So usually I recommend um, that you take shower space just for the sake of it. So let's say that's like kind of your formation when you're trying to hit A. Um, and again, there's going to be sort of a demonstration to kind of show you what I mean. But for most of the time, you're going to put the Viper wall set up or the Viper set up up. You're going to walk with it and you're going to take a short space. Once you get to that point where, you know, you get to the orb or whatever, um, you know, there's multiple ways to do it. But the wall is going to go down or you flash through it. And then once that happens, you're basically going to smoke. Uh, the first smoke is going to go like kind of top truck. It, you know, basically um prevents vision from anybody playing heaven uh which is pretty good and also like smokes off like anybody from backside as well um and then you're gonna smoke uh like the shower side like triple and then this basically just isolates your entire site <clears throat> and this gives you the opportunity to get bombed down and take you hall space and play the pulse plan from there so overall there's no like necessarily uh special way to play clove uh, i mean the the one thing that you're going to be able to do with Clove that you're not able to do with Brimstone is that you're going to be able to use her decay or sorry, their decay on, um, you know, the, the side exec. So you can decay back triple right here, which is pretty recommended for me at least. And comboing it with a raise nade is even better. Um, you're gonna, potentially going to get a kill or a lot of damage. Um, decaying in U-Haul is also good. You just throw it. It pops. The guy's 90 like he has 90 damage of decay you can just peek him after just have to land like two bullets in the chest so it's a very advantageous fight to take and then even if he you know deals you i don't know 80 damage you can heal and then you just refresh right so it's like um that's what that's what you want to do on clove right you want to just shove your util in order to get a lot a lot of damage and you want to take fights on the side exec so that's for a site next site is b site now, B-side is very easy to kind of explain because the Viper setup stays the same, bro. Whether you're going A, B, or you're just defaulting or whatever the fuck you're doing, um, you're just like, this. the Viper setup remains the same. And usually Viper is going to be like perma playing A short or showers, depending. So let's say you want to go B. Um, what I recommend doing with Clove, usually speaking, is either going, I mean, one of the two is fine. I think going... Um, I think going long is a little bit better um, for Clove because you just have like more angles for the metal. So you can throw it, <clears throat> you can throw it here, you can throw it back, back sight, you can throw it in elbow, like on the side of elbow on the run out, you can throw it CT. There are a lot of things you can decay with that. And I think like, I mean, you, realistically speaking, you can, you can hit any of those decays from, uh, from hookah. But if you go long, I think it's a little bit better, to be honest with you, just because like I like the fact that you don't have to jump out. I think it's better to take fights and stuff like that. So, I mean, it doesn't necessarily matter. But let's say you're going long with, I don't know, like Sky, and then your Gecko and Rays are going, um, you know, short or hookah. Well, your smokes are very generic. I mean, I would be very, very surprised if you'd use like any other smokes. But, you know, it's going to look like this. <laughs> no rocket science. Um and yeah it's like there's no other smokes you can throw in my opinion that are necessarily better um i mean if you're on eco there are things you can do like where you smoke like this and you just run elbow but like i'm not gonna get into that to be honest with you like it's really just like not clove specific stuff right it's stuff that people did on brim that you can transfer up with clove um but yeah so smoking like this nothing special about it and then it's all going to be about 
you know, using your decay. So like I said, you can decay backside, combo it with a raised nade, which is pretty good. Um, you can decay cubby, which you can also combo with the molly. Um, there's the run out elbow, which is like a little bit less recommended. I think these two, these two ones are sort of the better ones, to be honest with you. Uh, there's also like throwing one CT to prevent the run out. That's also pretty good. But if you can land a gecko molly there, you don't necessarily need it, right? You can just like decay nade backside and then you just clear cubby by yourself. Um, you know, there's just a lot of things you can do. And if your Viper is with you, you can also like decay Viper molly here. There's a lot of things you can do. But you just try to basically get the biggest amount of damage you can, to be honest with you, like with the with the decay. That's basically the goal of it. <clears throat> like you just throw it somewhere you think someone's going to be there, right? It's very subjective. Um, at, like throughout the rounds, you're going to know like, okay, well, this guy plays backside or this guy plays cubby or this guy plays, you know, wherever the fuck he plays, you just throw it, right? You're going to know. Um, so with Clove, one thing that I like to do is like when I run on site, um, one thing that I just don't recommend doing with Clove is just playing the pulse plant, right? So you see a lot of these, like Viper is a good example, right? You're going to see Viper playing long. She's, she's going to play mollies for bomb, right? Um, you don't want to do that with Clove because the reason, well, first reason is because you can actually give your life in order to like try to get an advantage because let's say it goes to shit and you get killed. You can still smoke for your team after you die. It's not the same thing as like you're playing brimstone and like you want to keep your smokes and whatever. Um, even then like brimstone doesn't have any rechargeable smoke. So it's not even logical to do that at that point. So you can take fights, you can die. I mean, obviously like you don't want to give your life away, but, um, you know, taking fights is like, you, you need to be the person on site rather than Viper is basically what I'm saying. So what I, what I like to do is basically find on site, right? If the site's clear, if the site is clear, that's cool. You can stay on site. Uh, but one thing, one thing that I like that I like to do is like going up, <clears throat> going up elbow and actually trying to take a fight like either CT afterwards or just like playing the pulse mine from there because taking elbow space is very valuable, especially when the bomb is planted like, um, like here if you know what I mean. So what I like to do is like if I have like a flash agent um, on my team, which in this case would be like Sky is the better one. I would just say like, yo, Sky, can you like flash me an elbow? And then, you just, you know, Sky's just going to flash you in there and then you just take the fight and then, you know, you can just go from there. And um, I think that is very effective. I think that's one of the reasons why, um, you know, that's one of the best re best ways to play Clove because, I mean, Clove has a, a heal and stuff like that, like fighting, fighting abilities, right? So it's like, that's what you want to do. You don't want to sit like long and play the post plan because like, that's honestly just not going to lead you anywhere because you could get as much value of like playing long and smoking for your team if you were just dead because you still have the rechargeable smokes post death. So it's like, why the fuck not? Right. So that's one thing I like to do. Um, the other thing you can just sit on site, hold the run out CT. There's a lot of things you can do as long as you're like the first person to take a fight, in my opinion, um, or like the second one, if you're trading a teammate, um, I think is the best way to do it. So yeah, there's nothing too much to say about B-Side specifically. Like I said, it all comes down to these two smokes, to be honest with you, and throwing a decay where you think you're going to get um, a lot of value from it, right? So other than that, there's nothing much to say. Um, it really gets a little bit more interesting on the defense side, but for now, that's kind of what I have for uh, attack. So now, yeah, we're going to move on to defense. All right, guys, so now I'm going to be talking about defense. Um, honestly, this is sort of like the most interesting part uh, honestly about clove on this map is like you know the defense side attacking is pretty generic you're basically just like th doing the same thing as brimstone although you just want to be the person in the front lines taking fights that's literally just the only difference um it's a little bit harder to play pulse mine as well because you don't have a molly um but yeah no defense is definitely like the most interesting part about clove on this map i think that <clears throat> um their utility kit really permits, um, really like allows them to take a lot of uh, fights that are calculated, and you can get a lot of value out of uh, also like counter util and stuff like that to to hold sight. Um, but yeah, so basically, I just like I said, I'm going to be using like kind of the same comp as an example. I mean, a lot of people run that comp, so it's like pretty, um, it's nothing like too out of the ordinary. Um, but yeah. So the first thing you have to understand is like, like I said, you're going to be sort of playing off of the Viper's util a lot. So the thing you have to understand when playing Clove on this map, I really recommend using this Viper wall. Um, so it's the, it, it covers the entirety of B and 
uh, showers as well. Now, the thing that you have to understand that's like the thing you have to kind of keep in mind is that Viper can smoke B, like the entirety of B, so the both chokes by herself with that wall, right? Um, so this means that you don't have to be like necessarily like uh, like 0 0.1 second delay before you smoke like both chokes, right? Viper can hold her own for like the amount of fuel that she has until you get like here and then you smoke, right? That's the first thing you have to keep in mind. Viper can take care of herself on the B side for like a limited amount of time. Um, she also gives like a good value uh, out of the wall, like extra value to like potentially take shower space. And um, you know, it's, 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 that's basically the wall I recommend. Okay. Um, now in terms of Viper orbs, usually I recommend this one, um, but there's also like this one who's pretty good to hold hookah. But you know, let's say this one is pretty, pretty standard as well. So let's say we run this one. Um, basically on Clove, your duty is going to be proactive. So for example, the first thing is you're kind of like the backup smokes, if you will. So the first example I'm going to give you is like, let's say they heart B hit. Okay. They want to go B Viper puts her wall up. She mollies like she mollies long and stuff like that. And they can't go out. That is your time as Clove. You're kind of doing the same thing as Brimstone. If you need a, if they need a smoke long, you need to like move and throw these smokes before the Viper wall goes down. So, um, you know, just to give you like small perspective. So if they're going B, Viper puts the wall up, you just go and spawn, right? Like if they take long space as well, because if they just take hookah space, they can easily, you can easily like uh, smoke uh, hookah from u-haul but if you if you need to smoke long as well you just run and spawn while the viper is up and then you smoke both chokes and then you back up and then the viper can put her wall down and then recharge her fuel for other shit as well so that's the first thing that's like the kind of like the the only time that you're actually gonna smoke like well like obviously like you can play b at times but like usually my recommendation is like playing a and then you just move yourself to try to smoke both chokes for viper while her her wall is up so that she can put it down and then you just back up and then you return to your initial position so that's the first scenario second scenario is if they are a fast hitting team where they like to hit a short or a like showers or whatever it is your better your best friend in these scenarios is going to be the metal like the the decay so throwing it here or here is going to delay their sight hit and it's going to basically make them reset and it's going to, you know, give an opportunity to your teammates to kind of adapt. So let's say you want to call it rotate in or whatever it is that gives you time to do so. But if they're a very defaulty team, like they like to default, play slow and stuff like that. Uh, one thing that you're going to want to do is... Um, is take fights that are calculated and before i go into that so one more thing that i need to add is with clove the thing you have to understand is you have two smokes you have two smokes and they're rechargeable right they recharge um one by one this means that when the barrier goes down like if you, let's say you play u-haul when the barrier goes down um or like, let's say, let's say you play showers. Let's say you play showers. When the barrier goes down, you don't have to worry about B because Viper can smoke it by herself. And you don't have to worry about both chokes being held because you're going to use one of these two smokes to kind of get extra space. So let's say you throw this smoke first thing and you get, let's say, just shower control, not even to take the orb, just to take shower control and they end up going short. Well, you still have that one smoke in your inventory that you can throw. And then that basically just covers a short. So everything's covered. Right, shower is covered, short is covered, and then B is covered because of the viper wall. And you can also do this vi vice versa. If you want to smoke deep, deep A main to either bait out utility to clear the smoke, or just run, you know, time because they they if they just wait for the the smoke, they that's time that is running. So you know, all you have to do is like let's say you're playing U-Haul. Well, if they're hitting showers, if they're hitting showers, well, all you have to do is smoke here and by the time that happens chances are you're going to have your smoke back and you can smoke short 
And even then, you don't necessarily need to smoke short because all you have to do is hold like everything behind this line, like the U-Haul line, everything behind this line. And then once you retake, you're gonna have your smoke back and you can you, you can throw it here and here and then you just retake. So that's what you have to understand. Like with Clove, if you're gonna have two smokes to yourself and not use them at all, might as well use one when the barrier goes down and get some sort of value. Either they use utility to clear it, which basically baits out utility, Either it uh, makes time go like it, it basically um, wastes a lot of time because if they decide to not clear it with util and they just decide to wait for it, well, that's like, I don't know, I think it's 12, 13 seconds um, that you don't have to worry about for, you know, the remainder of the round. So it's like, that's one thing I recommend doing. It's like either smoking deep, sh deep showers or deep short first thing in the round. You can also you can also smoke here or here if the viper wants to do something else with her um or which let, let's say in this case but that you would have to play b but it's also possible so yeah using one smoke to like smoke either deep short or deep showers because you're gonna get it back anyways might as well use it it's gonna either gonna like um you're gonna get value out of it either like um in time or in utility <clears throat> that you know the opponent's gonna use now considering that you know you do this the other thing that I like to do, and when I say proactive, is like take strategic fights. So like I said, if they're a very like defaulty team, they like to default and stuff like that. Most of the time, like you're going to have like that one guy, if, especially if they have a Viper, they're going to have that one guy who's like outside showers alone. Or like if they have a Viper, well, she's probably going to use her Lurk setup. She's probably going to use her Lurk setup like this. Right, so she's going to be like often like a short by herself while people are going B because she wants to lurk and whatever. Um, this is a good opportunity to take a fight because that that person is very vulnerable. Like she's by herself. So with Clove, you can basically use their abilities and get a teammate with you to actually fight that. So the first thing is like let's say Viper's outside showers and you know like she's outside showers like pretty regularly. One thing you can do is like off the bat of the round, you can ask like, yo, Sky, come with me, we're going showers. Viper will put your wall up instantly. You just walk up if there's no noise. You flash through, and then you just fight the guy. And then it, even if you wanted to as well, you could smoke deep short first thing, like while you're here, right? The barrier goes down. Well, you, like, technically, you're, you're here. Barrier goes down. You smoke. You walk up with the wall, and then you flash through, and then you fight that guy. And then once that guy dies, well, everybody on the B side is going to be forced to speed up. And then you have enough delay util from the Viper to uh, to kind of like wait for a rotate, right? So Ray's can rotate pretty well and get help on site. If not, they can just exit and play retake on B because you have man advantage at the end of the day, right? So that's one way to use it. Um, another similar scenario that I like to kind of do is the, pretty much the same thing, but it's on A short. So if you know Viper is always like left side A short, for example, one thing you can do is set up with your... Um, with your sky or whoever your initiator player is and then once the the barrier goes down you smoke deep showers and then Ray's can hold it or she can even be backside doesn't necessarily matter just some sort of presence with the smoke and then you just push down a short and then you can just fight that guy right um, obviously you have to worry about this side but one thing you can do also instead of smoking showers you can smoke right side and then just isolate that fight and then once you get that kill you just back up um, obviously, it's a little bit more risky because they can wreath clear through the smoke and, and, you know, potentially crunch you, but you have to be careful about these things. But if you know for a fact that Viper's always along left side, they're always go B, well, that is something you can do because you don't have necessarily, to, you don't necessarily have to worry about the right side. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's kind of it. I mean, you can also, like, use that smoke to, like, smoke deep short, and then you go in the smoke, and then you can f flash, like, I don't know, like, right side or left side to fight whoever whoever you want, and then you just fight that. That's a good way to use Clove, because let's say you take damage, well, you can just pop the heal, and then you just reset, right? Potentially get another kill or another trade-off, and then you, you just constantly get the advantage going. So, um, so yeah. Um, if you are going to play um, A, like I said, the best way to kind of um, play them is in a proactive way. doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do these fights that i just showed you every single round that happens like once in a while most of the time you can play passive and just play your uh your best friend for that is going to be the decay right so you can use the decay for the short push or the shower push because that's basically a good piece of counter util it's going to prevent them to going out on site they're going to be forced to like just cancel the push and then just wait and then that gives the opportunity 
to your team to either get a rotate in if you need one or just get your smokes uh, back on track or back on and then you can just re-smoke, right? That's that's a good piece of counter util to use. You can do the same thing on B, right? If you want to use if you want to play B, um, let's say like switch with the uh, switch with Gecko for example, um, you know you can it's 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 going to be a little hard to like use your smokes like fully because you can realistically only smoke a short but you know if you want to <clears throat> if you want to play passive b you can use your decay to delay from short push to long push doesn't necessarily matter and you can also do the same sort of play that i kind of showed you with sky right you can call sky on your side say yo viper you can play at this round just throw your wall and then you go you go a and then you just use the sky put the the orb up you go down and then you flash through and then you can just peek through and take a fight right there's a lot of things you can do with clove but you really have to sort of use your resources which often is your utilities uh, your teammates utility or presence right um but overall the best way to describe clove on defense is to play them in a proactive way that's it man um, honestly it's not too rocket science um, it's it's really just you have to be proactive you have to like take fights when you think you need to take fights and you need to play passive when you think you need to play passive if you're going to take fights you have a heal for that you have a re respawn for that that's that's like you know good utility to help you do that but if you have to play passive you can also use the the decay which is a good piece of counter util you can hold sites pretty well with that so that's also a good way to do it clove can have multiple play styles but it's really just up to you of like okay this round is it best to play aggressive or is it best to play passive that's it but once you get that difference in these plays that i just showed you you're you'll know when to do one when to do the other and then you're gonna see you're gonna rack rounds and you're gonna get kills you're gonna get a lot of value out of the kit and you're gonna be able to you know just find a lot of success with that agent all right guys so this basically concludes this video um like i said clove is a very subjective character um you know you can use them as uh an aggressive um character or a very passive character it's really just up to you i think that finding the balance between both is going to be like um the sort of you know skill that's going to define how much value you can actually get out of their kit um you know i don't think you should come into a game and say okay well this game i'm going to purely play aggressive clove and then you just do like either the you know the shower push or the short push like every single round like obviously they're going to expect it at some point it's not going to work anymore you really need to sort of find that sort of alternative where you're like okay this round i'm going to play aggressive or this round i'm going to play passive and once you really find uh that ability to kind of distinguish what what time you or uh, what type of round you want to play well that's where you're going to get like the most value out of out of clove so yeah this basically concludes this video i hope you guys enjoyed um you know i did kind of the same type of video um on icebox this is the second sort of um video of, like the same format i would say um so this being said if you guys like that type of you know format and you want to see more um, it doesn't necessarily have to be clove it can also be like any other agent i know i mentioned like a lot of viper in this video like i could potentially do a viper guide but i know like a lot of people do a lot of good ones so like fns did a good one uh vapen did a good one so there would be like a lot of recurring stuff but you know there's always things that i can um show you guys that they don't necessarily cover so if you have like any suggestions of like agents on specific maps like like just overall agent guides that you want to see let me know in the comment section. I'm glad to try to make things happen as much as I can. Um, and yeah, so like any feedback that you have, just let me know in the comments, to be honest. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. So just to sort of, you know, conclude, if you guys enjoyed this video, please subscribe. It's kind of like the best way to support me. And if you want to see more of that content, um, that's basically the best way to make it happen as well, right? So like, let's say like you want to, I don't know, like a Viper guide for bind or I don't know, a Viper guide for icebox or whatever it is. Um, you know, the best way to make those happen is by subscribing, right? We're closing out on 200 subscribers. Um, you know, it's been insane for the last like two weeks, right? We've gained a total of like 180 subscribers, I think. Um, so, you know, it's, we're on the grind. We're growing a lot, uh, very fast as well. So, you know, just subscribe, man. 